Implicit differentiation, level one. Recall that when we express functions using equations, we typically write them with the independent variable, usually x, and the dependent variable, usually y, separated by an equal sign, so that the dependent variable is explicitly expressed in terms of the independent variable. For example, the equation of a line in slope-intercept form expresses the variable y explicitly as a function of x. Here, the dependent variable y is written explicitly in terms of the independent variable x. In other words, y is a function of x. Now let's compare the same equation of a line defined implicitly by relation between x and y, the dependent and independent variable respectively. The equation of a line is expressed using the standard form of the line as opposed to the slope-intercept form of the line. Notice that one variable is not explicitly defined as a function of the other variable. Nevertheless, f is still a function of x, and this is very important to remember. I repeat, y is still a function of x. If you remember from your studies of Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus, you actually dealt with implicit functions when you learn about conic sections, specifically circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas. If you recall, the equation of a circle with radius 5 and centered at the origin is given by the implicit equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. We need to find the derivative of this function. What do we do? We are fairly good in finding derivatives of functions whose independent variable is explicitly expressed in terms of the other variable. So one course of action is to solve for y. Let's do just that. So we have the implicit equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. We solve for y by subtracting x squared from both sides. And we have y squared equals 25 minus x squared. So now we take the square root of both sides. And now remember, when you take a square root, you usually get two answers, a positive and a negative answer. So we actually have positive negative, the square root of 25, minus x squared. Notice that we need to take a derivative of two functions, the positive and the negative function. In order to take a derivative of the positive function, we rewrite the expression into a derivative for any form. So the derivative of this function is going to be equal to 1 half times the quantity 25 minus x squared raised to the power of negative 1 half times negative 2x. And that of the negative expression is the same thing, but we just add the negative sign. Notice that we end up with two functions, the positive function, which represents the upper half of the circle, and the negative function, which represents the lower half of the circle. This means that we need to find the derivative of two distinct functions. Finding the derivative of these functions yields the following. Okay, well, this function was relatively easy, because we were able to express y explicitly in terms of x. But you ended up taking the derivative of two functions. In general, if you use this approach, you will waste precious time. Not only do you have to algebraically have to manipulate the function to solve for y, but you might end up with two or more separate functions, which then you have to individually find the derivatives of each one. That sounds like a hassle. Fortunately, we can use the method of implicit differentiation. This consists of differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x, and then solving the resulting equation for the derivative. Let's see this technique in action. Find a derivative of x squared plus y squared equals 25. We are going to use a combination of Leibniz notation and prime notation to find a derivative. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side of the equal sign to maintain equality. You should have learned this concept back when you were in Algebra 1. All of these concepts build one over another. So the first step is to take a derivative of both sides. So taking a derivative of both sides, we have the following. When using Leibniz notation, the expression d over dx can be treated as a variable. Here we actually have to distribute the d over dx over x squared and y squared. So now, the derivative of x squared is just 2x. The derivative of y squared is a different story. Remember I told you to remember that y is a function of x. So here we actually have to use a chain rule. So the way you want to think about this is remembering that y is a function of x. We could rewrite the derivative of y squared as the derivative of f of x raised to the power of 2. And now here, the outer function is x squared and the inner function is f of x. So applying the chain rule, we have that the derivative of y squared is going to be equal to 2 times f of x times the derivative of f of x. Or in different notation, you could rewrite this as 2 times y times y prime. Or in a different expression, we could rewrite this as 2 times y times dy over dx. So here, dy over dx is the same thing as y prime which is the same thing as f prime of x. They're all just different ways of expressing the same idea. 
And here, the derivative of a constant is just zero. So we end up with the expression 2 times x plus 2 times y times y prime equals zero. Now the whole point is to find a derivative of y with respect to x, or to find y prime. So now the next step is to solve for y prime. So up to this point, it just becomes a typical algebra 1 problem, where you just solve for a variable, in this case, y prime. So adding negative 2 x to both sides, we have the following. And dividing by 2 y to isolate the y prime, we have the following. The 2's cancel out, so now we have that the derivative is equal to negative x over y. Notice that the final expression contains the independent variable and the dependent variable. This is typical when you find derivatives of implicit functions. If you really want it in terms of x, then substitute y with the explicit form of the equation, as follows. So we see that we get the same answer as we did when we found the derivative the long way. And again, I emphasize that you remember that y is a function of x. In order to find a derivative, we need to apply the chain rule at all times. You can think of this idea using Leibniz notation as follows. The derivative with respect to x is going to be equal to the derivative of y times the derivative of y with respect to x. And remember, this is just an, an application of the chain rule. Alright, in our next video, we are going to work on some examples.